Chapter 4. Spectrum of Marks. Let's assume you have a list of creative and inspired names for your product or company. You've sent several to your trademark attorney for consideration, and you're ready to make a final decision choosing a brand name to launch. Before you do that, there's another key consideration. Some brands and trademarks are entitled to greater protection than others. Think of it as a sliding scale with the type of brand name determining a lot about its registrability and scope of protection. You can see on the accompanying graphic that there are five elements in this sliding scale and the respective strength of them that we will discuss. In descending order from those with the most protection to those with the least, they are coined trademarks, which are completely new and made up terms, such as Exxon for oil and gas, or Kodak for film and cameras. Arbitrary trademarks, which are real words, but are words that are unrelated to the goods or services at issue, such as Yahoo for internet services and Apple for computers. Suggestive trademarks, which are words that relate to the goods or services, but that are not descriptive of them, such as Cafe Gelato, O-H-H-H, for restaurant services featuring gelato, or e-beanstalk for an online store service featuring developmental toys, or tough racks, T-U-F-F-R-A-X, for ceiling mounted shelves. Descriptive terms or trademarks are those that can be used to refer to a product or service or to its functions or characteristics. Examples such as Sports Illustrated for a sports magazine and US Pro Golf Tour for golf tournaments. Finally, we have generic trademarks, which are words that are commonly used to refer to a good or service in its entirety or that answer the basic question, what is it? Such as a laptop for portable computers. Coined, arbitrary, and suggestive names are generally able to become registered trademarks provided someone has not already registered a confusingly similar term for a related product or service. Coined and arbitrary marks are given the strongest protection and are thus considered by some to be the most desirable. Descriptive trademarks may sometimes be registered but are generally afforded less protection. For this reason, descriptive marks are generally considered weaker. Finally, generic trademarks are the weakest of all. In fact, they're not really trademarks at all. They're entitled to no protection. In my humble opinion, after having worked with thousands of brands and thousands of trademark filings over two plus decades, suggestive names or coined terms that are suggestive are generally the best because they are entitled to good solid protection, are creative, and they tell the consumer something about the good or service. Whereas a arbitrary term, even though it's entitled to strong protection, doesn't really tell the customer anything inherently about the product or service. I want to discuss now briefly a case study that sheds a little bit of light on why some trademarks, in particular descriptive ones, can be more challenging than others. The case study relates to five-hour energy drinks, which you have probably are familiar with. You see them oftentimes at gas station uh, checkouts or in the supermarket or other places. And of course, there's not a lot of thought involved in figuring out what is a five-hour energy drink. Guess what? It's supposed to give a boost of energy and it's supposed to last for about five hours. Now, the benefit of such a mark is that it tells the customer exactly what it is, right? They don't have to figure it out or think about it because perhaps their competitor Red Bull is a name that's not intuitively associated with energy or beverages. So someone who was unfamiliar with their product, if you said, 
hey, get me a Red Bull at the store, they might be like, what aisle is that in? What's a Red Bull? I have no idea what that is. Whereas if you said, get me a five hour energy drink, they're likely to know exactly what that is and where to find it. So the case study, you can read more about it in the book. Again, building a bold brand if you don't have the physical copy. But basically, 5-Hour Energy had trouble enforcing its mark against a competitor named 6-Hour Power. And the reason was because the court said, look, 5-Hour Energy is descriptive. It's weaker. It's just legally entitled to a much smaller scope of protection. And 6-Hour Power, while quite related in the structure of the mark, wasn't identical. And the court found, at least in one of the proceedings, there were many years of proceedings, but the court found that the weakness combined with the differences avoided a problem for six-hour power. That's a cautionary tale about the limitations of descriptive marks. And it's also important to remember that a descriptive mark like five hour energy that's been marketed ad nauseum with millions and millions and millions of dollars will have some more protection than just a general small business descriptive mark because those will have even more problems without the acquired distinctiveness that may come with incredible marketing power. Now, why do I suggest suggestive marks? While arbitrary or coined marks can acquire even more legal protection than suggestive names, such terms may be more challenging to market and to promote because, absent a huge advertising campaign, consumers may not be able to connect the dots and therefore may not know what that arbitrary or coined brand name represents. Again, another example is Kodak. If I said, how do you like the new Kodak product? To somebody who was unfamiliar with their products at all, they would probably have no idea what type of product that is because there's nothing in the name that really tells you about it. Now, Kodachrome has some scientific meaning, but the shortened Kodak really isn't going to intuitively tell you anything. Five Hour Energy, our example of a descriptive mark, has the problem of being weaker. A, another example of why suggestive names are great is Netflix. It tells you something about the business, but it does not hit you directly over the head, like American Airlines or the Italian store, which use only common industry words that are used by their competitors all the time as their brand name. But because a suggestive name is not as direct as a descriptive name, suggestive brands are more protectable and are more likely to be unique and easier to enforce against possible infringers. Plus, and this is a real good plus, suggestive names are more memorable to consumers, which is really the main point of a trademark in the first place. Here are some more examples of suggestive names that I find to be great. For web-based businesses, Pinterest, Groupon, eBay, Travelocity, YouTube, or Open Table. In the restaurant category, Lox, Stock, and Bagel, Let Us, L-U-T-T-U-C-E, Eat, or Thai, T-H-A-I, The Knot. Or how about a salad restaurant called Tossed? Coffee shops. Uh, many, many great creative coffee shop names. Two that stand out in my uh, travels are Brood Awakening and Bean Around the World, B-E-A-N, Around the World. Some other creative suggestive names in different categories, uh, Sports Center for the TV highlight show, Versus was the name of a sports competition TV network, Bootleggers is a great name for a footwear store. And Tycoon, T-I-C-O-O-N. I always love seeing that one. It's at Penn Station in New York City when I get off the Amtrak train. 
and you're getting your bearings in that that chaos of Penn Station, I always see the familiar Tycoon store and I know exactly where, which way I'm supposed to be heading. Another store with a similar creative name is Perfumania. Again, a play on words, but similar in that it's suggestive and creative and playful and memorable. I hope you've enjoyed that discussion of the spectrum of marks and my assessment of why suggestive marks are the best. In the upcoming chapters, we're going to talk more about the different types of marks and about how to register and protect them legally.